and you know, I was already struggling and already falling apart and doing terrible things. And I'm expecting my wife to like, understand like what I'm going through. And she's like, you know, I do, but at the same time, like, I just want you to get it together. You're listening to the Blacktop Banter Podcast, the premier podcast in the asphalt industry made for contractors with contractors. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Blacktop Banter. We're peeling through episodes and uh, we're stacking a couple of them up. It's kind of the off season here as we're getting into it. This is actually my third one today. So we're trying to buy some time. We have conference season coming up. Well, it starts in January officially. Uh, we will be and we'll have probably by the time you listen to this be at a night construction summit in Clearwater, Florida. But we also have paybacks coming up in World of that Asphalt. And uh, we're partners with both of those. So we look forward to seeing you there. But in order to attend those events during those weeks and keep podcasts coming to you regularly, we have to stack them up. So I call on my old friends. I call on compadres. Uh, a lot of the partners that we work with now are able to jump in and help us out. And uh, recently attended an event in Louisville with my good friend, Naylor, who joins us today. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Man, doing good. Uh, the off season has officially hit here for me. So my dark, dark tan will start to get a little lighter. Like I'll go, I'll go from like a certain ethnicity to another ethnicity and um, then I'll go to Florida and then I'll go somewhere else and I'll come back for a minute. So yeah, I'm excited to go through my multicolor of changes, but I got the pink and like black and blue plaid on today because that hits the current tone just right. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It brings the color out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what, Ke- that's what Kelly tells me. So I just think, keep trying to wear them. She's like, if she, if I put something on she's like, that, you look nice today. I'm like, okay, that's a keeper. Right. There you go. Mental but if note. I wear, uh-huh, I wear the same one around a few times and she doesn't say anything. I'm like, well, this ain't going to do it. So that gets shuffled to the back of the closet probably. So <laughs> that's just how it goes. What about you? Uh, as far as business goes, slow down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, you know, we're, we're in Virginia, so um, it's, it's a little bit more extended than further up North, like where you are. And I, I'm originally from the state of New York. So it was a very short are a lot shorter, you know, season for, for mowing and for anything growing anyway, that is right. But then you, you transition to snow up there, but I never really did any, any of that, uh, cause I was a homeowner up there, but I mean, if everyone up there now that are in business, they can switch over. So down in Virginia here, we don't really have much snow. So, uh, but we can really just try to extend everything out as much as possible, but it's definitely the quote unquote off season, you know, not off peak slow, all that good stuff. So I try to really utilize this time to focus on all my social media ideas, you know, all the creating content and uh, networking events, you know, for LCR media, that's kind of where I really focus with, with a little bit of lawn care planning, like recapping the year planning for next year, but that's kind of like rinse and repeat at this point. So it's not a whole lot of mental yeah. you know, uh, work that I need to get into. Right. It's LCR media and takes a lot of my brain power, a lot of my creativity, which is what I enjoy. Yeah. I mean, uh, similar, like we kind of have the same mirror image of how we do things. Right. I mean, um, you yourself being the creative director at LCR media and what it brings into uh, the world. Uh, same thing, similar here with black top banner, me being the host and founder and what I am creative. I don't know if I'm the director. Chris is directing me nowadays, <laughs> black top banner, but uh, it takes a little bit of a lift off my brain, but same thing. Um, I can do that side. I can do the, uh, the asphalt was coat side of it really rinse and repeat kind of we're looking to scale and grow so it's becoming a challenge again for me which i really enjoy but this is the most challenge right creating content figuring out what we're going to do with events um, come with the podcast do all that stuff so it was really really great to catch up with you at one of your recent events there uh in louisville and uh, we'll talk about that here a little bit later but i really want you to be able to introduce yourself and kind of uh give us a short bio on nailer Growing up, Naylor into the like the regular world career that you had, and then how you got into lawn care, and then finally uh, bring us back to like uh, LCR Media and how that started because your motivations for starting LCR Media were very similar to mine for Blacktop Banter. Yeah, we we um we we have a lot of similarities. That is for sure. And you know when when we um I don't even remember exact. I I think it was like the like a a GIE, you know, which is now equipped, but I think it was a GIE plus expo like way back in the day that you were at. And I, I don't, yeah, but like, I, I don't even really know the remember the full story of, of how you like, you just, you went there because you wanted to connect and network and, you know, see some of the stuff that you could potentially use in your business. Obviously it's not lawn and landscape, but there's still other crossover things 
there. And, um, but yes, somehow or another, you ended up in my ecosystem somehow, like, and, and I get introduced to you and, you know, the rest is history. Like, you know, we, we, we kind of all bonded together, like a, a group of us and kind of, I just mysteriously somehow put together this mastermind inadvertent, inadvertently, like I didn't consciously think about it that way, but it just happened that way. And we're all, we've all been good friends for many, many years since then. But way before that i, I stuck yeah. out i stuck out is the problem right? and then i was like <laughs> and they're like what the hell? oh you're from the black cap world and then what the hell are you doing here like yeah. that was my way for somebody to ask me a second question right, right? when i got introduced and it's kind of stuck out and uh, obviously i was the only one in that ecosystem from the asphalt world right? yeah for, for so sure it, yeah it gets stuck in your brain like <laughs> okay if i'm gonna build something why not get somebody's perspective from outside here too? There you go. I mean, what was, what was that just a quick off thing? What was, was that part of your mission or you just kind of also no. inadvertently bumped into me or found out about me or whatever? Not really, man. Uh, what it really, what it was, uh, I had got bored. I had mentioned to Kelly that if all I do is make black top black and come back every day, I was going to be miserable. Um, and that's because I didn't realize it yet, but it's because I was searching for purpose. And a lot of people's purpose is um, getting married, having kids, getting a house, living life, saving up, right? B- building a fifty million dollar, you know, business or whatever, doing something right. in the fields, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah everyone's got yeah. their thing. So I came back one day and told Kelly that, and she asked me what was wrong. Right? She's like, "What's wrong? And what's wrong?" And I was like, "If if all I do is go out, and make black top black every day, come back, pay bills, go to sleep, wake up, eat dinner, go to sleep, go make black top black, blah blah blah, over and over, so I'm going to be completely miserable." And she was like, "I just thought you were tired." <laughs> or like your, your back hurt or something like she didn't realize what she was asking but right. also we didn't we didn't know that my brain was going to do that right so we ran into this issue of my brain changing once i achieved my quote-unquote goal that i didn't really set all i wanted to do was be a good dad be a husband have a house and live my life and that happened for about two years a year and a half or so and then that happened to my brain and i started searching like i don't want to play video games all the time uh you know in the off season I want to stay busy and I want to keep building my business, I guess, because I enjoyed it. So I looked into like uh, snow removal and I started, I found some videos by some influencers in the green industry that had like, hey, this is how you get in snow removal, whatever. Yeah. And I maybe watched two videos on snow removal. The one of the other second videos was how this long hair kid has 17,000 followers on Instagram. I was like, oh, shoot. I'm not even on Instagram, but that's curious to me. And it literally snowballed down a rabbit hole. And Kelly watched me for like the next six months consume over the summer all this content from the green industry. And then I realized there was a community. You guys talked about coming to GIE. And I was like, I I, I literally was laying in bed one night and I was like, I have to go down there. Like, I have to. This is what I'm supposed to do is figure out how to do this, I guess. I didn't want to be alone anymore for sure. And some of the things that were in my brain and you all were talking about, so... I came down there, man. And yeah, there was some, like there's blowers and weed eaters and we use that type of shit too. But really the main question I asked everybody was like, how do you create, how do you guys create this community? And they're like, oh yeah, social media. And I'm like, okay, I guess I need to learn how to use social media. So then that was like, how do you use social media? Well, why are you doing it? Cause I want to create a community. Okay. And I just, I was completely, you, if you remember, like you barely remember me that first one. Cause I was introverted so bad. Like, <laughs> Just all I want to do is just be there and listen. And I would wait for someone to ask me a question and say, yeah, I put black top seal coat down. And they're like, what the F are you doing here? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. That's the intro. That's my shot for the second question. But yeah. uh, it, I think about if you never would have uh, thought of me and if I wouldn't have came there, this wouldn't, this probably wouldn't exist. It may, but it may be different for sure. Different. For, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It would have, def- something would have yeah. been different for sure. And that, that's what I believe the, mo- the most out of, life like when people ask me the infamous question like what you know what would you what would you if there's one thing you could change or something you know what would it be or if you go back in time or you know what what, whatever all that stuff I I, you know I get that's that's cute and all that but I don't subscribe to at all like everything that we Mm -hmm. went through made it put it put us right where we are right here you know good Mm -hmm. bad and different like as painful as things were as joyous as things were they they make you who who they are I mean I I feel like that's like a fact like I mean I'm not talking about I'm not talking about time travel or, 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 um, um, 
you know, spirituality or any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about just like, it seems like simple physics, simple math, like, you know, you are a product of your environment. I mean, how can that not Mm -hmm. be the case? That just seems like simple logic. But of course, I'm no, I'm no um, expert at any of those things, but I I, I definitely. Yeah, but you're not, you're an observationist. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And 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 we have enough friends to observe that like the ones who have went through some crap are doing pretty decent if they use it the right way right it's if you don't use it the right way and you right. try to escape it versus figure out how to use it for your purpose right like there's a there's a couple paths there you can yeah with some of that stuff but for sure but how'd you even get to this point first of all, <laughs> yeah the, yeah <laughs> yeah well i was gonna just wrap that up by saying wow that was awesome i hadn't really heard the back 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 story there with you consuming our content over the summer and all that and and that's mm-hmm. that's really cool. So I'm glad things have pan, panned out the way they did for all of us, because you, you've been a big help to me as well. I mean, even mm-hmm. we'll, you know, when we get get all the way back up to this most recent equip and it was like old times with with you and me and pay jack and everybody. But um, at the rally. But anyway, we'll, we'll tease everyone with that. But so, I mean, ultimately, when I was growing up, I was an only child, single mom. You know, my dad was in the picture, unfortunately, as much as I want him to be. So I, I kind of had that missing out of my life. And I did, you know, I had a, a big extended family, but I didn't really connect with them, you know, as much. They were, you know, further away and all that. And so, my, you know, my mother always worked multiple jobs just to try and make make ends meet. You know, we still had government assistant, food stamps, all that fun stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't live, we didn't live in the best part of town and all that, but she tried to do the best that she could. And, you know, she put me in like a Catholic school, you know, when I was growing up and try, thinking that that would be better than a public school and kind of getting stuck in that whole deal. So she, she, she did whatever she could, but I was alone a lot as the point to, to that story because she was working all right. the time and I didn't have anyone else in my life. You know, I had a couple friends here and there. I, I was very, I am very close and introverted also. Um, social media has really brought that out, brought like, has kind of flipped that around, but I still ultimately like to just sit in a quiet room you know and like and like like uh re-energize myself people wouldn't believe that dude people don't believe that about us with what we do right yeah i i i I do not feed off of other people's energy they suck my energy away so then i have that that's the true definition of an introvert people can argue all they want is that even a thing and oh it's whatever you say it and you know you're calling yourself this and blah blah whatever you want to say about that there there is definitely a clear difference between me and my wife for example my wife lives off of other people's energy she lives off of busy crowds being you know just being involved in everything that that gives her full of energy all day every day me i get depleted i get migraines i want to just pass out and go to bed yep. if i'm in that environment too much so i have to pace myself yep. and learn how to navigate so that's why nowadays when we go to equip you don't see me like constantly at one place all day every day. Like I'm like zipping around one. I have a lot of different things going on, but it's also partially by design in between all those things. When I can, I'm taking little breaks. If, and if I have to drive here or there, no, no, no matter what, you know, like I, that's kind of a break too, because I'm usually by yeah. myself or whatever. So anyway, so I've just always been that quiet reserve person that never really, I wasn't the life of the party, by default, like not that I necessarily didn't, you know, didn't have that opportunity. I just didn't really feel comfortable like that. So I had a a few select friends. So I I just had that kind of that childhood and and growing into the teenage years. But I kind of felt feel like now I always was missing that sense of community, family, friends. I I always wanted that even though I was alone. It's not like I, I didn't make myself alone. It wasn't by choice. And it's not like I wanted to be alone. Now I did adapt to being alone and, you know, people could, could think now, like times my, at times my wife was like, well, you know, you like being alone, so it's okay, but I can't stand it. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I don't really like being alone. I just, I just can't be, you know, I, yeah, I just, I just grew up that way, but by default and I kind of grew, like adapted to that environment to be able to deal with being alone. You know, I, I didn't, you know, I don't need constant stimulation, all that, but also if I do have too much stimulation, then I'm exhausted. Ver, yeah. you know compared we, to other we, people so we just did the km event over in michigan yeah uh, which when you hear I this, saw that be a while back and uh, i called kelly afterwards like i was on my own out she's like what's going on I'm like i feel completely alone and she's like you were just surrounded by like a bunch of people and i and i'm like trying to like decompress and figure it out in my brain i'm like i just don't feel like i belong here like i just i want to be like not that i want to be alone but i just feel alone and sometimes it's easier to be alone when you feel alone because then it makes sense, right? Versus right. Like being alone around a bunch of people, you're just like, what is going on here? Right. And you're actually alone and you feel alone. You're like, okay, 
now this kind of makes sense a little bit but yeah it's a it's hard it's a hard dynamic to under to express and get across to people and have them understand but knowing that there's people like you and i there and it's like okay you're you're not weird it's just how you're built yeah yeah i mean there's there i'm I'm a big believer there's like two different types of people two different human beings there's the ones that that are like us that are like you know kind of reserved and get depleted if we're you know giving too much of our energy out and then there's the ones that feed off the energy neither one of those things are, are good or bad it's just the way it is human beings were created that way for whatever reason so um and you know you just kind of roll with the punches yeah. and figure out what you got to do you and i both take a day or two to decompress afterwards, <laughs> yeah. right well, after these big ones usually after our events like at the galt house you and i just hung out and yeah everybody here a while back yeah and uh yeah and I, I that's what i was doing after this event it's not it's not anything it's just like that's been my natural defense of like okay i'm exhausted and i have to think about some stuff right Decompress. but growing up like that um you 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 go to school, you're around people, you uh, get into a, a standard career, which is being in charge of people and around people, having <laughs> right. people and all that stuff. So you navigate through all that. Uh, talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, well, so I mean, so so that, that I think that's kind of like the seeds that were planted of me being alone and kind of not necessarily wanting to be alone, but adapting and dealing with it, but ultimately still wanting you know, longing for, for friends, community, family, and all that. So that was kind of just in the background planted now looking back, you know, realizing that because of everything I've done since then, but, and that was just kind of uh, germinating the whole time. But then in college, you know, I was just looking for a part-time job, like just about anybody else. Right. And I just did the whole retail thing. Cause that was easy. And, and, uh, I started working at the gap was the first place, you know, I just went to the mall and was dropping off applications everywhere one summer. And they're the only ones that, that gave me any kind of uh, attention. And eventually I, I got, got the job for the summer. And then I, I transferred to the one in where I was going to college. So I basically c- continued like working for the gap. Like, you know, like I didn't stop, like I just kept transferring from, you know, my home store to the college back to my home store. So every break I was at a different store. So I quickly, you know, just kind of, um, became, I guess, known and like w- with both, both stores and within kind of like the, the ultimate ecosystem of, of that general area. Cause I didn't go to school too far away from there. It was like a couple hours from there. So I don't, I think there were two different districts, but they were still kind of connected enough in the same region. And I just kind of quickly got identified with having leadership skills and, you know, asking if I wanted to do this or that. And, and I was in college, so I wasn't really trying to get too carried away, but like, I was like a head cashier or something like different things like that. And I was just, I was like, all right, cool. I mean, to me, it was just like more money and, and I was getting, you know, I was getting some attention and I'm like, all right, cool. Like people recognize that I'm, I'm doing a decent job or whatnot. And, but then I really kind of, um, realized when I finished my two years, like I went to a community college and then I was going to, tra- then I did transfer to a four year college, uh, back home. And, mm-hmm. but in between, I was like, I'm going to take a year off. And everyone was like, Oh, don't do that. You'll never go back. At least at that time I was hearing a lot about that. It's, it's hard to go back if you stop, but I'm like, whatever, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I want to do. So I took a year off to work full time, you know, and say, like, I wanted to save up money. I wanted to pay off some of my college debts and save up money for a new car or for a car. Like I just had some bummy used, you know, vehicle that I was able to seize the opportunity. That was another, you know, early, you know, I'm like the most opportunistic, opportunistic person. A lot of people have probably met in our realm nowadays, but it, it started from way back then. I just kind of had the knack for that, a knack for networking, a knack for seizing the opportunity and getting the most out of it and all that. But so anyway, I just wanted like a real good vehicle. Um, so I, I, I was wanted to save up money for that. And so I took that break in college so that I could work full time at the gap and see if I can, Oh man, really reliable. I don't know about that, but it it was a, it was a a minivan. (laughs) Oh, right. Yeah. It was good times. It was a used minivan. And, um, yeah, I got a lot of looks whenever I'd pick up the girls. (laughs) Yeah, it was. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it, dude. You've been locked into Toyota forever. Yeah. Yeah. still locked in. I know for sure. For sure. But yeah, I got a lot of looks from the from the, 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 the parents when I'd pick up the girls for date night or something. And I'm like, Oh man, come on. It's not like that. I'm not trying to like, 
you know, I don't have a shag van. Like I didn't deck it right. out. It was just, just a, you know, just you a regular a kids. Maybe they just figured you had a few kids <laughs> maybe, already. You had to maybe, follow around. Maybe, <laughs> you know, everyone always said I was more mature than, than, than my age uh, at the time. So, um, oh, yeah. whatever, you know, kids, then will here, do that. kids will do that to a young <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. Three exactly. Or four kids as, in college will do that. To exactly. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah. So, so anyway, you know, as I, I just took that year off, but, but, but doing that made me, um, r- raise, um, rise through the rankings quickly within retail, within at the gap at, at the time at retail management. And, and then I, I did go back to college and, and all that. And I was still a supervisor and wanted to get higher and higher because then at one point I realized, okay, I feel like I have a career here. Not, not that I want to spend the rest of my life in retail, but I mean, I, I met my now wife and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I, if we want to like, you know, have a life together, like we're just like, oh, let's, you know, let's get an apartment, like starting all these little steps. And I'm like, I can't just, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. You know, I need some sort of financial stability and a career. And at the time, retail management seemed like, seemed like it was the thing because I was going to college for art. I'm, I'm an artist, which now will make sense to a lot of other people. Like that's why I'm so creative because I have a creative mindset. I, I'm, I'm an artist. I paint, draw, sculpt, all that kind of stuff. I visually look at things differently and interpret them differently and make it a reality with my hands, you know, um, and, and my mind and all that. But so I was doing that, but I didn't really see what, what I was going to do with that. Like, where is that going to take me? Am I going to be like a college art teacher or a professor or a high school art teacher, which that's disrespectful. No one, no one respects to, to high school art teacher. So I think, I think I'm going to have to stick with college if that's the case. I'm like, then there's a ton more schooling and I, or am I going to be a starving artist? You know, like I, I was going down that whole thing, which, you know, quick side tangent, you know, my son is a musician and it's like the same thing. It's like, he doesn't want to be a starving artist either. He doesn't want to just go from gig to gig. He's like, what do I do? And it's the exact same thing. The the Mm -hmm. options are exactly the same. You either be the quote unquote starving artist going from gig to gig, um, or trying to sell your work as a painter, whatever artist, or or you become a teacher. Like those are like the Mm -hmm. only two options. And, you know, neither one of us, him or I wanted to dedicate our lives to teaching, even though we're, we naturally have patience and kind of teaching characteristics to help, you know, people that we want to help, we don't necessarily want to make a career of it. So I didn't really know what to do. So I just kind of leaned in on retail and, and went through all rank, went through the whole management ranks. Um, and, you know, eventually was a store manager, not at the gap. I went, started going to a couple of different companies to make more money and more opportunities, you know, bigger, bigger box department stores, things like that. And, um, but, but my life started going one way and retail management was going another way. You know, like I got, we got married, you know, had our first child and got a house and all these things. So obviously financially, I still needed that stability and I was making good money over the years. And when you go from, from, to another company, they're usually trying to recruit you and give you more money and all that. So I was making good money, but my life was just, my quality of life was going downhill. Like, uh, as a single young college guy, it was no big deal. But when you're, when you've had, have kids and you know, you're missing, you know, missing right. out on things with your kids. Like my wife's like, Oh, you know, um, our, you know, our daughter j- just crawled for the first time. I'm like, dang, you know, like stuff like that was, mm-hmm. was, was not cool. Like there was times where I literally would go, I would not see my daughter for like 48 hours because she's a baby and she sleeps mm-hmm. a lot. So I would leave early in the morning to go to work and then I would, and she'd be asleep. And then I would work really late that day, like way past my shift because of all the chaos. She'd be back asleep. She'd be back asleep. And then I'd have to leave the next morning and she'd be asleep again. And then if I could get home in time the next day before she goes to bed, I might see her for an hour or two, tuck her in and that's it. So it, it was crazy. It just, it got to me fast where I'm like, this is not where I want to, where I want to be, but I still stuck around for years because I didn't know. And then we had our son and then I missed all types of stuff. My wife, you know, we were getting like the cell phones that you could take like, you know, choppy pictures and videos of, and I'm seeing these clips of my son walking and I'm like, man, I'm missing out on everything. It's ridiculous. So it, all this stuff just kind of marinated and started breaking me down. And I just kind of started falling, falling apart, like mentally and, and emotionally, because I wasn't, I wasn't there for my family and I wasn't really enjoying my life. Anytime that I was home, I was exhausted and just kind of a shell of myself and probably depressed, you know, like just not really not present is what my wife used to say. I wasn't present um, at that, yeah. those times. Yeah. Kelly would say that too, right? Like, especially even with Wisco, like it, Wisco started to demand so much of my time and I spent so much time on it that uh, it did that. You yeah. Know? I was like, man, you know, I get it. There's nothing I can do though. Right. Like that was my mindset. There's nothing I can do about it. 
until we started hiring people on and doing different things and we were able to do something. About it. But how does that transition then to where you start doing your own thing? Yeah. So then I just, I've always, when we got our first house, you know, I just stumbled upon my joy for, for lawns and lawn care and all that, because we, we had to kind of like start a lawn from scratch. You know, we, we had got a house built, which was a crazy experience. But at that time we felt like that was the best option to find what we wanted. We couldn't find like anything used what we wanted, where we wanted it. So we kind of just found like a new neighborhood that they were building houses and we're like, Hey, let's give that a shot. And, you know, new homeowners and building a house is kind of crazy, but, uh, you know, uh, up not, not here in Virginia, you know, up North, like I said, I'm originally from, but so I, I just kind of got a green thumb by trying to figure out how to grow grass, you know, for our own property, okay. go in the big box stores, you know, there was nothing on the internet, you know, the internet existed, but it was, it was very, it was like Facebook was just popping off, but there was no lawn care, anything out there on the internet. There was, it's very antiquated. So there's no learning, no anything from a homeowner or a professional. So I was just going to the big box stores, reading the, you know, bags of the products and, you know, most of the big box stores have like this book, different books for all these different trades. So there's like a lawn and lawn care book or a lawn and landscaping book or whatever. And I still have those two on my bookshelf right here to, to this day, you know, <laughs> home improvement, one, two, three, you know, with all, all these things. So, <laughs> and I would just read those books and I would learn, you know, whatever I could about lawn care. So that's kind of was my entry to, wow. to lawn care. I, be, I became the homeowner that had like the neighbor, the lawn that was the envy of the neighborhood. Like I would yeah, kind of like, lawn. you want best lawn. Yeah. Like, you know, Literally. yeah. Like all the, all the wives would ask my wife for tips and stuff. And I felt bad for the guys, you know, I'm like, Oh dang, you know, like, I hope that's not putting a bad taste in their mouth. And needless to say, I wasn't invited to poker night or anything like that. Yeah. But, like, no, we don't want uh, that. We yeah. Do. But, but yeah. you know, I just had a really good lawn and, and I enjoyed it. And that kind of, yeah. I think was like also more seeds being planted that were just kind of germinating, like, Hey, I really like doing this. But at the time I really didn't think anything of like, and it wasn't even a thing back then. We were, I was probably like 20 years ago, like that. It just, there was obviously landscaping back then, but it was like bigger companies and it wasn't yeah. like, it wasn't like a commodity like it is now. It was more frowned yeah. down upon, like you had to be rich and famous to be able to afford a landscape company to take care of yeah. your property. They didn't just come mow your lawn and bounce. Like they came and took care of your whole property maintenance all year and you had to pay monthly. And that was not, that was not how our society was 20 years ago. Now, fast forward, you know, 20 years later and people are like, why don't you have someone taking care of your lawn? You know, like even just someone cutting your grass, you know, like, or a whole like company taking, so not, not now we've got guys just driving around in a truck by themselves. Like I started out just mowing lawns and then you've got the big company. So it, it's, it's like a huge open field for everybody now. But way back then, I just never even thought that was a thing. But I just that's where I kind of got my green thumb. And then when I came to the point where I felt like I was literally going to snap, and I probably yeah. did a little bit and started sabotaging myself, which is, you know, I've read a lot of stuff in the last 10 years since I made that transition of self help and trying to, re, you know, recover and, and repair that all the damage done in my life, um, relationships and everything with my, my family and all that. I, I just, people don't realize they're doing that. Yeah. Like, right. they, like you don't even realize like, that's why you're self sabotaging to most people. They're like, Hey, I'm just trying to have some fun. I'm trying to get some relief. Yeah, no, it's subconsciously. You're trying to get out of the it situation. Is. Like that's a part and of you. It's like, stop, stop. <laughs> you try telling somebody that and they're like, they get offended. Like that's not it at all. Like, no, it's definitely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would That's have never it. known that if it wasn't for all the books and things like, like I know Keith Kalfas, a good friend of ours, mutual friend, you know, mm -hmm. he, he was spent a lot of time in those early years on YouTube, just, you know, pacing outside his, you know, his neighborhood, know, walking dude. the dog, just pouring his heart out. And he said a lot of that stuff, like, you know, human beings have to get to like below rock bottom, you know, before they can start climbing back out. It, it really sucks yeah. that we have to get that low to make a change and, you know, self-sabotage yeah. and all the, I, I've read about people you care about right you know, yeah because like, people are getting hurt in the process see i see yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 so yeah it's, so it's, then you, that that was the trigger yeah you end up getting into starting your own business doing that yeah well i mean i just i just i, I literally just came to the point where literally i was sabotaging myself and i was doing things that you know i i um i would say i regret because i do because it hurt people but at the same time like I said before, it, it, it brought me to where, you know, where I am today, uh, un unfortunately and unfortunately for the collateral damage of all the things that happens to people when they get 
caught up in these things and get in their bottom, you know, whether they have a, an addiction to something, you know, like substance abuse, what like all the different things that people get caught up in going through this turmoil, you know, and, and hitting on their way down to rock bottom, you know, and then you got to repair all the damage. But, you know, I just, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I, I realized I needed to press the hard reset button. I mean, I didn't realize it kind of was just like thrown in my face, honestly. Like the last thing was my boss and you may or may not remember this or may, I don't even know if you've ever heard me say this, but, uh, my boss at the time came into my office and looked at the pictures of my family behind me who my boss, his man, my manager was not a nice person. He was like a real jerk. So him saying this made me suspicious because he was like, oh, you have a really nice family. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And he's like, but you're going to have to choose. It's either them or, or this place because you just can't do both. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, ah, oh, wow. I can't believe he just said that. Like, is that even really that? how is that even possible that the, that came out of his mouth? I, I didn't even say anything. I just kind of like sat there and nodded my head like, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then he just, you know, tried to elaborate a little bit more, but at that point I just kind of like blocked him out. And then he eventually he just got up and left. And, you know, as nice of a person as I am, I still want to believe that he had the best intentions, even though he was, he was a jerk and he's probably being, you know, still being a jerk about it. But I think his intention was to get, was to have some sort of change to either get rid of me or to get me more focused on what he wanted, which was that store and that company, and that business. He could really care less about my family in that. Like, right. he, like he couldn't care about both. Like if I was no longer right. employed, like, like when I put in my two weeks notice, all of a sudden we were like BFFs and I'm like, dude, it's too late for this. Don't try to act like you're cool now. And like, we're friends. Like what? Like he started yeah. telling me all his personal stuff and about his divorce and all these things. And you know, it's hard. That's what I was trying to tell you. And I'm like, man, I don't even want to hear this anymore. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm ready to just murder you. I'm honestly, gone. you know, I'm, I'm gone. <laughs> I, I put in my two weeks, like, it's not like I just instantly became a different or better person. Like I'm still like, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do with myself. Like I'm literally like in a bad place and now you want to yeah. be like my friend or something, you know? And I'm yeah. just like, come on. Yeah. Man. He's like, join me and join me in misery. Yeah. Let's yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You're going to be miserable too. Let's do this. Yeah. So like clear, <laughs> exactly. Clearly I yeah. chose my family, not that place, but, but, but I know yeah. he, he, he was right. You couldn't really do both at the, at the level that retail was at, at that time, trying to fight with Amazon and all the e-commerce and all that. So this was 10 years ago, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, you know, um, Thanksgiving, not even being a thing anymore. Cause black Friday mm -hmm. became like black Thursday, basically, you know, you're opening up at like mm -hmm. 8 PM, you know, for all the door busters and it, 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 it was just crazy. So it, it was absolutely the worst. It was the worst time to be where I was, you know, personally mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, um, mentally and, uh, and emotionally in that, in that thing. So that, that's what kind of really broke the, broke my back. And cause he just kind of gave me an ultimatum really. And, and, you know, I was already struggling and already falling apart and doing terrible things and not really doing, doing my best as a leader at that place anyway, which he knew that. And he was constantly getting on my case and I was so stressed out and I don't know how I can keep up with this place and be around for my family. I'm expecting my wife to like, understand like what I'm going through. And she's like, you know, I do, but at, at the same time, like, I just want you to get it together so that you can, you can be here for me and, and, and your children and everything. Like, you know, I, I, I get it. But at the same time, like, you know, like, come on, like something's got to change. You got to figure it out. Like, you know, whatever it was, it was, it was a lot, you know, we, we it, it was a struggle. So I, I just pressed the hard reset button and leaned in on, on lawn care. I'm incredibly proud of the blacktop banner edition seal coating unit produced in partnership with KM international and available in both 550 and 700 gallon versions custom built on the same frame as their bulletproof hot boxes. I work closely with KM to design what I believe is the best seal coating unit on the market, a unit designed by a contractor for contractors. Learn more about the unit and to see a walkthrough of the entire unit by visiting kminternational.com. Hey, Jessica Lombardo with Pavex, the pavement experience, and I want to invite you all to join us in San Antonio for the first ever event. It will be held January 30th through February 1st at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. We are going to have a live equipment demonstration over two days, 60 hours of educational programming, and a full trade show floor with over 75 manufacturers of equipment in the paving and pavement maintenance space. So, Please join us there, and to learn more and get yourself registered, visit www.pavexshow.com.
If you're serious about efficiency and performance, listen up. The Craftco Supershot 125 is not just a melter, it's a strategic pavement maintenance advantage. Quick startups, fume-free, automatic agitator shutoff, a splash-proof lid, and pumping on demand, these features are essential for any serious asphalt maintenance contractor. So don't settle for mediocrity. Elevate your game with the Craftco Supershot line of melters by visiting craftco.com today. In my opinion, Dynapack CC900G Roller is the best roller on the market for driveway and small parking lot paving contractors. The seismic technology in these rollers is unbeatable for the smoothness and compaction they provide, and I choose the Dynapack CC900G over the little yellow roller that you're used to seeing every single time. But don't just take my word for it. Check them out in person at Pavex and World of Asphalt, or visit Dynapack.com to find a dealer near you. Hey, Blacktop Banner fans, this is Michael with Aquafault. Say goodbye to potholes and roadway damage without the need for large crews, heavy equipment, or toxic chemicals. Aquafault is the only permanent repair material for asphalt and concrete that uses water. An installation is simple. Just pour, add water, and tamp. It's that easy. An Aquafault repair can be open to traffic immediately and fully sealed within 24 hours. Plus, the product is backed by a three-year warranty and made in the USA. Visit Aquafault.com. That's A-Q-U-A-P-H-A-L-T.com to learn more. In the past year, Jobber has been our CRM of choice at Wiscode, and it's made our world exponentially better efficiency-wise. The request to quote and quote to invoice process is seamless and professional. The scheduling aspect keeps us on point and the team leaders moving throughout the day from project to project, while the timesheet feature tracks the team members' hours. For our small seal coating company, it has helped build the solid foundation we can scale from. Jobber is now a sponsor of Blacktop Banter and helps bring this show to you. With this partnership, Jobber is offering an exclusive savings to BB listeners of 20% off for six months. To take advantage of this, find the Jobber link in the show description and get to improving your process today. Hi, contractors. It's Kyla from Wiscoat. We use Stencil Plus for all of our pavement marking stencils, alphabet letters, numbers, directional arrows, handicap markings, you name it. We use it and we get it all from Stencil Plus. Right now, for a limited time, you can save 10% on your stencil order by using code BB10 during checkout at stencilplus.com or by calling 877 372 6055. Contractors, you need to make it easy for potential customers to reach you. Get a custom phone number from the 800 Pavement Network and plaster it on the side of your trucks and rigs, and I guarantee you'll see increases in leads and jobs booked. Get yours by calling 1 800 728 3636. World of Asphalt is the leading asphalt trade show and conference and it'll be taking place on March 25th through the 27th, 2024, in Nashville, Tennessee. From mainline to maintenance, the show will be your one-stop shop to see everything the asphalt industry has to offer. Registration is now open, and listeners can save 20% off registration with the code BB20 when they register on worldofasphalt.com. You know, after I got that kind of like ultimatum from my from my boss, I'm like, all right, I need to... I need to pivot out of this and I didn't know what else to do, but to lean into lawn care, which I had already started doing part time for a year, to be honest, which, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So the last year in retail, I actually was doing part time, um, lawn care, um, out of the back of my Jeep compass with my 21 inch, you know, homeowner mower and, um, trimmer and, and hand blower from the big box stores. And I, 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 I was just trying to get it done. I had like maybe five or six yards, And it all was kind of like random because my wife had kind of, I think I had flirted around with the idea once upon a time, you know, 20 years ago about, yeah, that'd be kind of cool, you know, to have a lawn care business or something. But, you know, we all just kind of laughed it off and I made like some business cards and it wasn't the name that it is now and all that. It just kind of was like this fun thing that I did in my head and nothing ever happened because whatever, it just, it just stayed in the back burner. and, And, you know, so fast forward. And then, like I said, 10 years ago, she was, um, on Facebook. And I I wasn't even on Facebook at that point. I didn't have time or care about any of that. Social media was like really starting to pop off. And and I, I just could care less and even know what that meant. 
because I was so busy working and being overwhelmed. And she got a message on our, in, in, in our, our homeowners association where we, where we lived at the time. And there's the private Facebook group for all the homeowners and all that. And people post yeah. stuff all the time. And I guess somebody asked, you know, for, for help mowing their lawn or if they knew anyone, you know, recommendations for that or whatever. And she just asked me, Hey, do you want me to, someone's asking for lawn care. I know you still got your stuff. Do you, do you want me to give them your, your information? And I kid you not, Marvin, if I didn't say yes, then you and I would not be talking right now. Who knows where That's I'd be? I, I might be dead, to be honest, because I was so That's depressed. Crazy. Like, I don't even know what, what, what I might be sick and, and who knows what my, my life would have been if I continued that path. But I didn't say yes. <clears throat> I said, sure. Like in a, a super like reluctant, like unappreciative, right. the depressed SOB that I was at the time, I was just like, sure. And yeah. she gave, gave them, you know, my information. And so the next time, you know, you ever see my wife, you can thank her. It's all because of her. So I will. I will. <laughs> thank you. you had Naylor say, sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because if she had never had said that to me or given me that option, we, we like I said, we, this would have never, never happened. I mean, I, yeah. or, or wouldn't have happened like this, like, like, like we said about you b before. So, but that, that's how it all started. So I mowed that guy's yard and he referred to this person and the neighbors are like, Oh, I can, you know, and then I was all going all over town. Route density didn't even exist. I didn't even know what that word was. I was just happy to get after it. But I really felt great out there in the lawns. Like, like, cause I already was that homeowner that enjoyed it. Now it's kind of like a business, even though I only had a handful yeah. of yards, but I was like, man, this is awesome. I'm my own boss. I don't have employees. I don't have a nasty <laughs> boss. I don't have nasty customers. I have yeah. my own customers that aren't even here. Most of the time yeah. I just come show up, do a good job and they're happy. I'm, and I get paid. I'm like, this is amazing. It was just so therapeutic for me. I'm like, that's I got to do this. I got to dig into this. So that's why I transitioned and, and leaned into that after I had to press the hard reset button there and cool. started my lawn care business. It went full time and haven't looked back since. But I will say that my wife had a full time job at that point for about a year. So if she didn't have a full time job, um, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, because I wasn't able to, you know, um, replace my my uh, retail salary immediately in one year. I, I did quickly get up to 30 something uh, lawns to mow within, cause I, I put in my notice this time of year, you know, like it was in December, probably the end or close to the end of December, right before, right around Christmas, I put in my notice. So I had January and February to figure it out. So I could hit the ground running in March when, when it starts warming up and the grass starts growing here in, in uh, you central What'd Virginia. you do to figure it out? What'd you do to figure it out? I, I did a ton of research and that's how I, like online, I did a ton of research and that's how I stumbled upon the, the community in its infancy. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of other people that just kind of post videos here and there, like nurse Nurseries and you know uh, um, arborists, horticulturists. I don't even know what their purpose of making those videos were for, but like they would just put random, you know, like, and, like they'd put like two videos out and never again. You know what I mean? Like you'd see like yeah. a two-year-old video, and you know they never respond to comment. You know they're not like a quote-unquote YouTuber or content creator. They just for some reason uploaded some videos just to try yes, and. You know. Somebody yeah. told them a long time ago, you need to. There you go. Video. There you go. It's for their website, maybe their business, or they're just trying yeah, to send it. Help yeah, you out. Can send the link. You can send the link in an email to yeah. somebody. Yeah. That's why they did it. But, but it was helpful for me because I, I was able to learn like how to prune crepe myrtles and this and that. And, you know, cause yeah, I don't know what that means. Right. Really, really, right. Really, really cool. Just, just a, a lot of pruning and a lot of lawn care landscaping type stuff. And I just, I just did a lot of, a lot of research to learn how to, how to go from being a homeowner to a professional contractor and, um, and what cool. kind of services to offer, how to price them, what kind of equipment and tools do you need? And, you know, Sean Spencer with Spencer's Lawn Care was putting stuff out. Greg, really? Chis yeah, he was one of the OGs. Yeah. Yeah, Spencer's Lawn Care was is is Shut literally up, one really? of the OG. Yep, him and Keith were making YouTube videos at the exact same time. And uh, Greg Chisholm was a geek to freak oh, lawn sure. and fitness. He was one of the OGs as well. He was like the OG of the community. He really brought us together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Sean Spencer he took a break. Like the same time That's Greg, was, yeah, when Greg kind of pivoted out, um, the, the same exact thing happened to Sean. But he yeah. just still focused on his lawn care business. I came into the community the year after Greg stopped. Gotcha. So I just heard remnants of it. Yeah. So you didn't even know about Sean Spencer then. 
Yeah. John Spencer. He wasn't right? even recently again. Yeah. Not until they fired back up again. Yep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's one of the OGs. I mean, the actual OG is the lawn care millionaire, uh, Jonathan mm-hmm. Potoshnik. He's mm-hmm. the he's the actual OG. He was making videos back in 2013 when nobody was making videos. He was just standing yeah. there talking about, you know, two man crew versus three man crew, you know, how to price route density. No, you're not like he was just like. And you would, and I saw, I binged all of that content because that was there and I stumbled upon it somehow or another. Cause you know, you start Googling stuff and you know how to, even back Same then Google was, yeah, Same Google was did. all about it, you know, pumping the yeah. content to you. So that's how I learned quickly. And, um, I, 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 you know, did a lot of creative things, just throwing a lot of things out there, trying to figure out how to get my name out there, get my customers. One of my secret weapons was I lived in an HOA. So I was able to just, you know, my wife created a, helped me create a business Facebook page. She's like, first you got to actually get, get on Facebook and have a personal profile and then you can create a business page and all that. And she's helped me with all that. I'm like, all right. So I did that and then I was able to post stuff on my business page and then share it from my personal page within my own HOA that no one else but, you know, people living there could do. So because I lived there, I had like a little uh, jump start for that neighborhood anyway. And then, you know, those people knew people from other neighborhoods and it just started spiraling, you know, um, quickly. What a great little tactic. What a great little <laughs> tactic, dude. We could use that. We can use that in our industry. You can. Right? You got guys that are in HOAs that have driveways. Yeah. Uh, if you're, if you join an HOA private group, which probably exists, you know, if not start one and then go to your, go to your doors of everybody be like, Hey, join the Facebook group. You know, well, here we are. Yeah. Then give it a little time to simmer. <laughs> and then drop in your business ad, boom. There you go. You want route density. That's a good way to do it. What a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Well, and, and, and a lot of people have come back to me with that. Here, here's here's the actual trick because most people don't live in an HOA or can or can do what you just said successfully. The easiest thing to do is, well, one, there's a lot of public um Facebook groups that are generated around these neighborhoods. So you just have to kind of go on Facebook and start typing in the search, like different neighborhood names and things. And you can find some of the like buy, sell trade versions of these groups. But, but the kicker is, um, I mean, if you have zero customers and you have to do what I did and, you know, in addition to marketing in my Facebook group, um, in the Facebook closed private group, I also went you know, door to door slash, you know, flyer box to flyer box in other neighborhoods that I wanted to be in. And as soon as I got one customer in there, then I could ask them to refer me in the Facebook, in the private Facebook group. And then you start expanding that way, you know, like you, 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 you friend them on Facebook and then you, you ask them to follow your Facebook business, Facebook page. And then now they can see all your posts and then you can easily ask them, Hey, can you share this post in your private Facebook group? Yeah, absolutely. And you can even That's offer it way incentive. better than a review. Yeah, exactly. Way better than giving me a review on Google. Exactly. You can offer them share incentives, you know, I'll give you a discount yeah. off of the next service or this or that, or a gift card or whatever. But most of the time people are just happy to do it for free because they just, they're when you, when you have good customers, clients like that, they become very loyal. You become friends and and it's all good. Yeah. You do good work for them. They're going to do good work for you, right? Technically, which is right. referring you to to their neighbors or their their family or whatever. So that wow. that's how it that's how it started to take off quickly. Was those few things that I did right away. You know, I got a magnet for my truck. Um, you know, door magnet just so that I could have my logo there for people to see and um. You know, I, of course I had a uniform, you know, like a shirt, a polo, that kind of changed off and on over the years, like the colors and, and the types with a polo or a t-shirt or this or that. But the logo was always the same. The business was always the same. Um, so there was always that. And I just tried to stay consistent with the branding and just constantly, every time I could, um, every time I could level up, I would, you know, like, um, when I got, a, a an enclosed trailer, I got that all lettered up. So it's this huge rolling billboard. So every time I was driving through neighborhoods or in front of someone's house, people always just saw a clean cut lawn care everywhere. And that just sticks and sticks and people, you know, start it all of a sudden it just becomes, Crazy. yeah, it just becomes, you become like a household name. And I yeah. mean, the best thing that, you know, when you have good route density, you know, when you're like really, really packing in all of the, your accounts in a, in a, in a sh- small area to really build that density is when someone, when you meet someone for the first time, whatever it is, whether it's at your, your kids, you know, school function, you're talking to other parents that live in the same area, obviously, or, um, you know, someone that reached out to you for a quote when they say, yeah, I see your trucks everywhere and you only have one truck. 
that's when you yeah. know you've you've done something you've done a good, good. yeah successfully with that density because you're just there all day every day and people think that you have multiple trucks but really you're just you get so much work in, in a small area that you're just constantly driving around and they think you have multiple trucks so and again that becomes you know, top of mind. And one time someone called me from out of town or they were moving from out of town. So they asked their private Facebook group that I wasn't in another neighborhood that we now have the most yards out of any of the HOAs that we're in, which we only have three HOAs and all of our yards are in those three. Like we were almost up to a hundred yards uh, a couple of years back before COVID, um, yeah. you know, with, in just three HOAs, but that, that third HOA, she posted in Facebook, Hey, we're moving from Jersey. Any recommendations for lawn care? And at that point I already had like 10 or 15 lawns in there. So like, even if a small percentage of those people that there's, there's more ultimately more than one person recommended me is what I'm saying. So like there was so many people, she said it was overwhelming. She felt like she had to call me because yeah. everyone was recommending me. Of course, the other people reckon, you know, one person recommended this random person, this random, but there were so many people consistently recommending me because they were all my clients that, uh, mm-hmm. she was like, I, it was like peer pressure. She just felt like, it. and I, I get called the sacks <laughs> that way because they feel like the odd ball out when I'm like doing the house on either side of them and all that. And they're just like, man, I just need to get this guy because you know, everyone else does like, geez, I need to get with the program or everybody, you know, wants to keep up with the Joneses and all that stuff. So that's kind of how all that escalated. Yeah. So when was the first time you made a trip to GIE? That was um, my second year in business. So very quickly because I stumbled upon the social media and the community in its infancy right after I went full time. So like I was, uh, you know, my, my first year full time, I was following along Spencer lawn care and the lawn care millionaire Mm -hmm. and geek to freak and Keith Calfus and everyone else that Mm -hmm. kept popping up in there. B and B lawn care was, was early on there. Top notch, all, all the folks that, that um, you probably have met, you know, early on, they were making content. Mm -hmm. I was following along. And then, um, the next year is when, uh, well, actually the end of that year, they started talking about, Hey, you know about this GIE in Louisville, Kentucky, maybe it looks like a really awesome place. And if anybody's going, maybe we can, um, uh, get together, you know, like just, just, you yeah. know, and they created like an email and all this to try and coordinate it. When was that? That was 20, that was 2014, but I didn't go in 2014. Okay. I started my business full time in 2014. Um, so that's why I'm saying 10 years ago. So it is, 2013 was, was when I kind of thought about the idea, but 2014 was like the first full season. So, but 2014, 2015 is when yeah. I went because I, I couldn't go the first year. A lot of people didn't go the first year because it was kind of last minute. I was just trying to figure this out. I didn't have any money for that or whatever, but I watched all their videos and I was like, Oh man, I really gotta, I, I really gotta go next year. So I, I had a whole year to prepare for. It. And I told my wife about it. She's like, yeah, yeah, I know you want to go. Let's, let's figure it out put money aside and all that Hmm? what year was the first rally well well, the 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 first meetup was 2014 that was that was how it all started was geek to freak and a couple Mm -hmm. guys like spencer wanted to go to louisville go to je get together somewhere and they went to the pizza place down the street and like Uh 10 people showed up last one i went to the last one at the pizza place at the pizza place that was when i took it over in 2016 yeah, I went yeah. to the very last one at the pizza place, and then the next year was at the where, at the mega the caverns. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So whatever year the very last one was, that was the first year that I went. Yeah, when was that? That was my second year. No, that was twenty sixteen. That was my 16? second year. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Dude, I thought I I thought I was super late. I thought you guys had been doing this no. like forever. So no. really, like you you got in in the ground floor because yeah, I got in like one year after all you started doing it. And that's when I came in. Yeah, because it, so it had gone on for two years technically before you had, you know went there. Yeah. But the first year was so small that it was so whatever because crazy. Is, so that the next year we all went and in 2015 and but there's still only like 50 people there we could play cornhole and all kinds of stuff outside we could just have a good old time yeah think about yeah think about because you were there it was packed you couldn't even move it escalated quick (laughs) i was gonna say it escalated very quickly then because i was like dude it must have took forever because it has taken me a long time to build it where you were fortunate enough to come to blacktop banner kickoff event last year right yeah that was amazing you were like yeah, you're like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, it's only took me this long to get to this <laughs> point, right? Uh, and then for me to realize just now that it, I, I got there like year two, year three, and where it was, and year four, we were at the Mega Caverns, 
And, and that I would say is on the scale with the uh, kickoff event that you seen last year. Um, it took me seven, eight years. So I had a double. So I always say that we're half the time behind the green industry in the asphalt industry. And that yeah. proves like, that's about the same timeline when it goes there, but you uh, took over and was like, dude, we have to do something. It's getting way too big for the pizza place. Like I didn't even get pizza when we were there. Right. right. So I was like, I'm just going to stand yeah. here and look at a few people that I know. <laughs> yeah, and, it's crazy. Uh, and I went up and tried talking to people and they gave me cards and they're like, here you go. Email me. Right. And I'm yeah. Like, like Stan. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, this is cool. Uh, yeah. This is completely not. And Keith tried pulling that on me. I called Keith out on <laughs> at my event the other day. Yeah. And, uh, but, but he did chase me down because I handed him his card back. Like, <sighs> like that's funny. He, yeah, dude, he handed me a card and was like, you know, I, I've done a lot of research and trying to figure social media and stuff out and whatever. And I went, here, dude. And he's like, you know, go online. You can see whatever, whatever. And I was like, here, dude, just take your card back. And I left. And then he chased me across the parking lot before I got my truck. And he's like, why'd you ask me that? And then I gave him my my synopsis of the world dealing me a raw hand and how I feel like I could be a lot better and I want to be the best version of myself. Yeah. I'm here and asking these questions from then on he I, I had him yeah from there from then on yeah well, once him, once you know, talk his language that's it yeah yeah and it, and it was in so yeah it was really really cool but um essentially when we knew that the pizza place couldn't hold us anymore and that you had this vision of something bigger that's when lcr media essentially started exactly born so that we could do this you realized kind of like what i realized well you realized it and I just mimicked like really the the thing of the there's an opportunity here commercial for people to support us. And if they can support us by people, I mean, companies, if they can support us, we can do this even cooler. We can do it even larger, right? To where it's better for everybody and really get people excited. So right. uh, last year we gave away $10,000 worth of stuff, nice. right? At ours. And it, yeah. and it was like, dang, like you've seen this. People were hyped, right? Yeah. We could, we could, we don't, we don't have, Bucket Up Aaron doesn't have ten thousand dollars worth of stuff to give away, but if you can create something around community to get people excited, you're able to do that. And uh, LCR Media was born. Yes, right? and, and idea. Yeah, and and really, really, just to come full circle for for everyone listening, and maybe even for yourself, the first time I went to the GIE at the time it was called when I, when I went to the after party, like it didn't even have a name. We just called it like a meetup or whatever after party at, at the pizza place in 2015 was the first year me and Blake and so many top not like everyone in the community went only a handful went the previous year, but I got to meet Greg and so many other people, you know, geek to freak so many of the OGs um, either at the GIE and at the meetup. And like I said, there's only 50 something people there, but this is when it all came full circle for me because I, I had also just started my YouTube channel channel um towards the end of my first year in business like 2014 i believe the end of it um yeah. and, and then started making regular content in 2015 so you know you go almost a whole season into october of me making content uh, regularly and i had whatever maybe close to a thousand subscribers at the time or something which was a lot for for back for back then even though the other the bigger guys had like five or ten or something but that that uh, you could see every the community was growing but i went to the for the first time to the meetup and GIE, obviously. And when I walked in the first, as soon as I walked into the, the big, you know, kind of empty compared to what you saw, you know, pizza place, someone from way in the other side said, Hey, rookie. And I'm like, what in the world? Cause my YouTube channel is lawn care rookie. I mean, I shorten everything now to LCR because people are like, you're not a rookie anymore and all that kind of stuff. And we all have fun with that. So I just shorten it to LCR, but even though I'm a rookie for life. Right. But, um, always trying new things. That's, that's been my thing because I feel like that's important. Keep trying new things and keep growing. But I was like, okay, who are these people? So I walked all the way over there. Hey, come on, sit down and get, have a drink. And they, you know, they had like a whole thing of, of drinks from the uh, restaurant or whatever. And they're talking to me and they're saying they watch me on YouTube and all that. I'm like, wow, that's cool. And then two times though, during that night, two separate times, two different people. One of them is a good friend of you and mine and our group um, from back in the day. Both of them separately came up to me and shook my hand and thanked me for 
you know, providing the content that I was providing to help wow. inspire them to get out of their corporate life and to start their lawn and landscape business. And if it wasn't wow. for me and all this stuff and they were like getting teary eyed and I'm like, what in the world is happening? That's what did it. That hooked me. That, that gave me full circle, that sense of community, that friendship, that family that I was missing mm -hmm. all this time. Those seeds had finally started to grow in that moment. It's like, they just busted through the soil. And I was like, Oh, okay. I, Oh, I was like, I was never not going to go to the GA ever again. I was never not going to go to the, to the meetup. Like it, it was like, I'm like, this is it. This is, this is it. And then, mm -hmm. but then after that, people started like kind of doing different things and exiting, you know, the, the, the lawn care community and YouTube. And I was like, are we still going to do the GIE? Are we still going to get together at the pizza place? Like what's going on? I asked like Stan and Keith and Blake and a couple other folks at the time. And they were like, yeah, why not? Yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, well, we should some, like, who's going to coordinate all this? Cause the main people are, are gone now. Like what, what, you know, right. so I, I just kind of just took, cause they were all just kind of busy doing their YouTube. And that was like, we were really starting to grow as a community and content creators in 2016. So I'm like, you know, brands are starting to recognize and give some free stuff and all that. And, and, you know, so they were all busy with that. And I'm like, well, l let me just call it. Someone's got to take care of this. Like, I'm going to call the pizza place. I feel like there's going to be more people this year. I created a Facebook group, which is what really fast forward to now with almost like over 3000 people in this Facebook group just for equip. Like that's, in my opinion, that's a lot of people that are just obsessed with equip. It's not like some generic lawn and landscape group. That's got 20,000 oh. people. It's like, it's just for the, for equip. And we, we keep a tight ship in there. It's, it's hard. You know, people will try to post random other stuff and we just try to keep it focused on, on equip. But I wanted that to be a hub. I, my, my vision for that Facebook group road to equip was to make it a hub of communication for the whole community because with all the different people, you know, making YouTube content and, and new people coming into YouTube and all the other platforms that were popping up at the time, like Periscope and live streaming, streaming was becoming a thing and Instagram was being popular and Snapchat popped up and obviously now TikTok mm -hmm. and all these things. But I'm like, there's so many different uh, channels for people to communicate what they're going to do at equip that it's hard for people to know what, who's what. And, 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 I, and it was, it was, people were always asking, Oh, do you know if Blake's going to be there? Or is top notch going to, where's top? You know, it was just, it was just a lot of confusion. I didn't even know where half the things were going on. So I'm like, let me just create this mm -hmm. Facebook group to make a hub of communication and we can streamline all the communication, all the meetups, all of this. I'm coming in this day, that day. And it's taken on a life of its own, which is awesome because now people are helping each other. It's not even about like YouTube or whatever content creators. It, it's all about the community that goes to equip and they want to learn and at, Hey, what, what, the, what's a good hotel? What time are you coming in? Where, who's going out to dinner and when and where, if it's not, you know, if it's like super early and there's not an actual event already scheduled. And so it's really taken off. So those two things really is what catapulted everything. And then I started work asking some, you know, um, Stan helped me, uh, partnered with, you know, he, he referred echo and some other uh, brands to me to, to maybe potentially work with for, for the meetup, which we then, um, called the, the, the YouTube rally or the rally because, um, uh, a brand skag had reached out to me and a couple of us on the Facebook group. Cause they didn't, they just knew we were admins. They didn't know who was responsible for anything. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know if they could be a part of our community. They thought it was cool. They wanted to know if they could come to the, to the meetup and give out some stuff. And I'm like, sure. And like, we want to make custom hats. What's, what do you call this meetup? So we can put it on the hat. And I'm like, I don't even know what to call it. Like a meetup. That's, that sounds kind of lame. Like we got to have some sort of name. So, you know, you, me, all, a bunch of us, we kind of talked about it and you know, we just kind of came up with the rally, the YouTube rally. So, uh, that, that, that's kind of where that was born as well. And it's, it's just grown year after year, content creation grows, um, our views and follower following grows, the community grows, the industry's growing, uh, uh GIE became equip and it's growing by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it broke a record attendance the past two years in a row, uh, up to yeah. 27,000 plus people that showed up. I remember when they were only getting, when they were only right, getting 20,000 people. And we were like, that's crazy so they're just like they're just you know like uh well exponential no, no rain bigger. outside no rain <laughs> yeah. outside helped out a lot this year for sure like, for right. sure yeah you, you, remember, you remember that year we were there and the thunderstorms went and like the power went out on yeah the side, like half half of the kentucky expo center we were like damn yeah this is gonna be a tight one but we still had a great time and yeah that, that's what the thing is that community has made it such a great time exactly every time and the community has been the basis for lcr media being able to expand and do some different things so right. 
uh, I, I want you to talk a lot about, uh, if you can, you know, I yeah. talk a lot, but talk about some of the events. <laughs> like, I mean, that's kind of my MO, like, uh, uh the long care millionaire yeah. said when he was speaking the last event I was at, he was like, I, I don't do anything short because <laughs> someone was like, yeah. can you make it short? And he was like, I don't, I don't do short. That word doesn't exist in my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about it though. Cause you have a couple of events coming up. I really want to try to get to the summit. Um, I'm going to super, super try to squeeze into my schedule and make it work. But tell us about those uh, events that you have coming up, please. Yeah, absolutely. So, so as we know, so the rally that, that is, that was kind of what started all off. That's what gave me the passion to keep growing, um, to keep growing myself personally, but also to keep providing like exploring opportunities to create events for the community because I, I, it's, it had, it had become my family and I wanted mm-hmm. to keep, keep creating those environments for other people to connect and grow personally, professionally. So I just continue to find more opportunities and, and get the most out of every opportunity. So, I mean, you know, without going through the whole timeline, you know, now there's the the morning show at Expo where we do live podcasting on stage. It's a, it's a huge event. Every year just gets bigger and bigger. Last year they added they added a hundred. Last year it was standing room only, double row, wall to wall to wall, and then th- they added 150 chairs, and it was again the same exact thing, standing room only, wall to. So they estimated over 600 people. We were probably close to 600 people at the rally this year. Like that's, that's a huge cap number that, that we seem to accumulate for all of our community events. And, you know, it makes the expo, the, yeah, the expo want to do more things with us. They recognized how important the community is and, and the content creators behind and all of that. Yeah. The value, like we're helping increase attendance and bringing more, more, uh, more events and value and, and, all, and all that stuff. So the morning show is pretty awesome. People say they get more value out of that sometimes. And some of the more, um, some of the other training, you know, things that are offered, which is pretty amazing. Um, and, and there's, uh, you know, pod row has been kind of a spinoff that, that I've been doing, uh, where we get to some of the different, uh, trade shows and we get a bunch of podcasters together, like Paul James and the green ship podcast and, and myself and some others. And we get together and we just podcast, you know, from a several different booths or location. And we just podcast with attendees and, and, uh, some of the speakers at the event and, you know, like, uh, some of the vendors and so on, and just get a lot of great content, helping to share motivation and inspiration to everyone listening, as well as for us personally, networking and growing the community. For me personally, it's all about networking working with you and, you know, Eric Triplett, the pond digger and all these people from different, you know, different verticals within the service industry as a whole, so that we can keep growing the community from just beyond the lawn and landscape aspect. That's kind of like my ultimate goal and mission. But first I was trying to make LCR media, the household name within the lawn and landscape community and have all the biggest brands and equip. No. And I've definitely achieved that with all the different events and content creation and collaboration and um, but then, so, so, so pod row was kind of that podcasting, as you know, we're on a podcast, right? Podcasting is, is, is kind of like the big popular trending thing right now. It's been around for a long time, but we're on another, we're on another up uphill, uh, wave here that we're riding, um, and, and trying to get the most out of it for everyone's benefit. So we can all learn and grow together. So I keep creating events for that. Like I took influencer live and made it instead of just a live panel on stage, we turned it into the morning show where we're podcasting live on stage and the audience audience can still ask questions and it's all recorded and it's all cool um, for, for everyone involved there. And then after the fact, listening to the, to the episodes that we upload. So there's all that. And then, um, you know, like I said, we have the rally that kind of keeps evolving to bigger and better venues and, and, you know, bringing everyone together and having a good time. Pod rows, kind of different events, uh, different trade shows that we're at. Um, and then the, the uh, podcast summit is another one that I, that I started as well, because we were always going to different events and podcasting was always in the background. We were always like, you know, meeting up in the hotel lobby or a hotel room or something and trying to bang out some podcasts with the people that were there. But it's like it was always in the background. So I wanted there to be an actual event where podcasting was in the foreground um, and we could actually focus on that. So Podcast Summit is that. Uh, so last year we had it's been two years going on three. But last year was at the uh, the Almonds, Caleb and Brittany Almonds new shop, which was epic in uh, in um uh, Ohio, I think, like uh, where, 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 where Carroll, Ohio, I think. But anyway, yeah. um, you know, like people probably don't even know where, some people might know what, what I'm talking about, but anyway, it's in Ohio, a great shop. We had the podcast summit there. 
a lot of podcasters showed up and a lot of people came like over 40 people in our community came to um, the almonds to meet us and hang out with us and get on our podcast. And it was just like a whole day of just networking and, and fellowship. And we had a good time, uh, you know, husbands, wives, kids. I mean, it, it, I got like 12 episodes and I was the host. I'm like, how did I even, how'd that even happen? Yeah. Caleb got like 16 episodes. We're like, I don't even think he ever came out of a studio. He just had like a catheter and was just going to town or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Brittany was just Brittany was just feeding him snacks all day and, right. and water and he was just banging him out one after another because he's like, yeah. man, I never have time for for this. So I love these kind of events because I can just batch all of this great content and I don't have to like scramble the night before I have to upload a, an episode yeah. to make something. So so that so so that was that. And then it's just kind of evolved to what you know from, you know, personally, I've talked about behind the scenes back in 2019. I really wanted to create my own live event that was like kind of standalone that didn't necessarily have to do with podcasting or equip or anything like that, which is the LCR summit. Um, and before I got to really like evolve the idea, you know, um, COVID happened and, you know, kind of shut everything down in 2020. I'm like, all right, well that stinks. So I just kind of put that on the back burner. But since then, you know, people still manage to get some events, you know, to, to birth some of their events, like Brian Fullerton's event, um, and some, some of the older events, you know, kind of resurfaced again. And so here I am trying to, um, bring my idea of the LCR summit, um, to life instead of it just being an idea. And it evolved yeah. also, it, you know, with time, everything evolves during COVID is when I created the morning show. I went from the influencer live to like, well, that's cause I started my own podcast and I'm like, wow, there's a few more podcasters now other than just Paul and, you know, like, um, the lawn care business success, you know, Julio Tomei up in Canada. Like there's actually like a, a bunch of people like, you know, Brian and Caleb and everyone's starting to come up with some good podcasts and, you know, within the, the green industry, lawn and landscape industry. And so I'm like, well, let's, let's hi highlight that. Uh, I want to ask you a general question. You've had a lot of experience in life at this point, ups and down, highs and lows, built things, um, had things, ha tried things that didn't work. We do, we adjust and we figure out something else. An overall piece of advice that you would give um, to anybody, I guess, um, what would it be? Like, what is that general theme that you've discovered? Yeah, for me personally, which I think could, could be helpful for anyone. Um, and I said this on stage, the morning show, this past equip was, um, I, at this point in my life, I'm really learning to, um, take my past insecurities and turn them into my future strengths. Mm. So like, you know, people always say I talk a lot and like, they would say that in a bad way. Like, oh, you're so long winded. You told us, okay, cool. Well, I create a podcast. Now I'm on stage, you know, talking in front of people. And that, like, I, you know, like I've gone to speaking events. I have a, a live podcasting at the morning show. Like I'm just leaning into that. Where can people catch up to you online? Taylor? Well, I mean, I'm everywhere. Um, a lawn care rookie LCR. If you just type in Google LCR or lawn care rookie, you'll see all my stuff, YouTube, Instagram, my podcast, the LCR media podcast, um, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, anyway, all the things. I, fans. Yeah, yeah, not, not sure. that. <laughs> but we'll, uh, I try to stay we'll on see. top of all the social media things that pop up. So. Yeah. There all right, go. man. So for myself, Marvin here in the studio, and Naylor Talia Faro with LCR Media, this is Blacktop Banter. If you have enjoyed this, I think you might enjoy Blacktop Banner Success Group as well. And you can get information on the Blacktop Banner Success Group, which is a group of contractors that are underneath the Blacktop Banner here, uh, underneath that umbrella. And we get together for a few video calls uh, each, each month. We have a 24-7 chat group where you can troubleshoot and learn all types of stuff along that way, as well as vendor discounts with partners that have partnered with us here at Blacktop Banner that for a lot of the members, it, it covers their membership. What they save through some of these discounts covers their membership for Blacktop Banner success group so pop on there at blacktopbearing.com learn about that a little bit and if you haven't on that website you'll see a page right away on the landing page to sign up for between the lines blacktop banners newsletter that is coming out with some great information written by contractors for contractors so once again for myself here in the frozen tundra of wisconsin at blacktop banter i'm marvin thanks again to our guest nailer and as always on blacktop banner we speak asphalt Peace. Hey, everybody. Marvin here from Blacktop Banter. And if you enjoy the podcast and what we've been bringing to the industry, you can support us through a one-time or recurring donation at blacktopbanter.com. There we have a support tab. You click that and choose your path from there. If you listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do us a favor. 
and leave a review there for us as well. As always, we speak asphalt and thanks for your support. This episode of Blacktop Banter is brought to you by Craftco, the world's leading manufacturer of packaged pavement preservation materials and equipment for the asphalt industry. Learn more at craftco.com.